In this week's Morales Blueprint, we're building a Web3 wallet as a Chrome extension. The final product will look something like this. You can create a wallet, generate a new seed phrase for you. This is a 12 word seed phrase. Let me copy this to my clipboard because then you'll be allowed to recover this wallet if you lose access to your wallet. So now as we open this wallet, it'll generate a new wallet for you. The wallet account over here, the public facing address is 0x1a. And you can go ahead and start making cryptocurrency transfers. Of course, this is a newly generated wallet. So we don't have any assets in here nfts or tokens you could go ahead and find altcoin gems using morales money but that's not the point of this video now as we log out we can go ahead and jump back into the same wallet by signing in with our seed phrase we copied to our clipboard recover this wallet and this same wallet opens up for us 0x1a but now to show you this is actually working we log out and over here i have my metamask account test account over here and we have some ethereum in this wallet we have some usdc tokens link tokens matic tokens on the ethereum mainnet and also on the polygon testnet we have some nfts and some tokens so now let me just sign in with the with the seed phrase for this wallet into our chrome extension wallet so let's go ahead and sign in with a seed phrase i'll pause this bit of the video so that you don't get the seed phrase although this is just a test account and boom i passed my seed phrase and now we're logged into the same wallet in our own chrome extension we can get our tokens on the ethereum mainnet as you see we have some usdc Chainlink, matic and uniswap and the same tokens are here you see our native balance is 0.01 ethereum and we can also get our nfts i don't hold any nfts in this test account on the ethereum network but because this wallet is cross chain we can change to the mumbai testnet over here we have two matic on the testnet and nfts we have these nfts we've created in previous projects and all of them are viewable over here in your wallet now let's do the final test the transferring of assets so here we have two matic let's get our account two over here get the wallet address for our account two check out the polygon testnet it has 32 matic currently 32.2 so let's try and send 0.5 matic so this matic balance should go up to 32.5 so as we paste this address over in here send an amount of 0.5 native tokens let's send these tokens it's currently processing and over here you can see the transaction hash if you wanted to check this on the block explorer there's an actual transaction and you see now our native balance has dropped to 1.5 and as we open up our account two over here that has just increased to 32.5 so everything is working beautifully if you're excited of how you can create a cross-chain chrome extension web3 wallet stay stuck in and you learn it in this video all right let's get started with this project in our favorite ide i use visual studio code but you can use whatever you'd like and the repository starter repository for this project will be available in the morales blueprints github repo where you can get the wallet extension starter repository where we'll have a backend folder my wallet front end folder which has a simple react app and i've already added this text file over here where we can store the seed phrase for a created wallet during the production of this tutorial but this is something you have to create yourself but like i said it's the front end is going to be a simple react app and if you didn't know this we can actually build our react apps when we scale them down so that they can actually be used as chrome extensions here in the source folder you see it's a very simple react app over here all we've done is we've wrapped our app component around the memory router from react router dom so we can go and navigate to different pages and in our app.js file home component we only have a empty div with a class name of app of course the css styling will be provided in the repo so in the app.css file you can find all the css styling for this project if you want to check it out for example this app component over here we've set it the dimensions that we want our chrome extension to be so a height of 600 pixel and a width of 350 pixels and now when we're developing i just wanted to set the background color to aqua so you can see the size if we run this project. So let's try and do that. Open up your terminal. Let's go ahead and CD into the front end folder, my wallet. And then go ahead and install all the dependencies, npmi. And now that all the dependencies are installed, we can go ahead and spin this up on localhost 3000 by running npm run start. All right, and that compiled successfully. And now if I bring my browser over to the screen over here, we see that our app.js component is over here. It's the same size as a typical MetaMask extension would be over here. But now we have it just running on a website. And at the end of the build, we're actually going to go ahead and attach it over into our Chrome extensions over here in developer mode. So you can see, have something like this, this that you saw in the extensions. But now to make development easy, let's put this into split screen mode like so. So now we see our repository over here, which we can edit. Let's jump into the app.js file over here, source, 
app.js like so and let's start making our edits over in here and as we make these edits we can see our extension update over here in our localhost 3000 radio so to give us some more space let's close down this terminal over here and in the start of our app.js file let's import some things we'll import use state from react so we can have access to state variables the Morales logo, which will be in our header. And then because we're using a UI library called AntDesign, we'll get a select input from AntDesign. So at the start over here, we'll create a header for our extension, which will have the Morales logo. And is, as this is a multi cross chain wallet, we'll have a select input where you have a drop down and you, sele you can select the chain you wish to use your wallet in. And as we have those, what we'll do is first we'll create a state variable for the selected chain. So the selected chain that we want us to use our wallet in, we'll initialize it to OX1, which is the hex value for Ethereum. And then when we create our select input, we'll define all the other options. And this selected chain will be the value for our select input. And now jumping into our app div, what we'll do is create a header like so. So now we have a header and the first thing over here in the top left corner of the header, we will want our Morales logo. So let's paste that in. Of course, this Morales logo is in the starter repository, so you don't have to fetch the items yourself. Of course, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and replace these logo assets with your own assets. And now for the select input, I'm going to paste it in over here and let's talk through it. So here we have a select input. The value will be our selected chain, so Ethereum. And then we have the options and it's an array of options where we have the label. So that's what's going to be pre presented on our front end. But the actual value stored in our state variable will be the hex value. So we have Ethereum, Mumbai Testnet, Polygon, Avalanche, and you could add any EVM compatible chain over here because Morales, of course, supports all EVM chains. So now let's go ahead and save this, see how that updates. So now we have a nice drop down over here where we have the Mumbai testnet, Polygon, Avalanche, and so on and so forth. But as we click them, our value doesn't say change because we don't have a on change event handler over here in our select input, which we can add very simply like so. So as we change our selected input, we'll take the value and set our value set our selected change state variable to that value. So now as we save that and jump over here, now as we check, select Mumbai testnet, that is reflected over here and it's stored in our state variable. So when we end up making calls to Morales API, we can use this selected chain variable and Polygon works fine, Avalanche works great. So that is our header complete. All right, and why we did this in the app.js component over here at the top is because we want to have this header available on every page. Now, for the rest of the content, this will be rendered dependent on which route you are currently on. So for that, we have to bring in React Router, React Router. So we'll bring the routes and the current route from React Router DOM. And initially, we'll also bring the home component. So in your directory, you'll have a set of components. They're empty for the start. So the home component over here, a very simple React functional component, which we're bringing into our app.js file. And we'll implement that as one of the routes for our app. So you'll see how this works. So outside of our header, let's go ahead and initialize our routes. So let's go ahead and make a routes tag like so. And within this routes tag, we'll have our different routes. Now initially, we'll only have our home route. And as we go through this build, we'll add different routes like for creating a wallet, recovering a wallet, or if you're already logged in, you'll have a wallet view where you can see all your assets, your NFTs and send transactions. So simply the root route over here, path, to the route, to the root is our home element like so. And as we save this now, by default, we can start working on this home component to add to this main content area of our extension. So let's jump into this home component over here. And it already has a con content div. All right. So before we start adding content into our content div over here, let's import what we'll need in this home component. So we'll have a wallet logo like so a wallet and it's in the starter repository. So you don't have to worry about it. It's just be a nice logo on the home welcoming the users to the extension. And then we'll bring a and design button just to make a fancy looking button for our creating wallet action and recovering wallet action. And now we can get going. So inside our div component, our main div, let's go ahead and first initialize our image of our wallet logo. I'm just going to add it over in here. So we have our wallet logo. The source is my wallet. 
which is coming from the starter repository. And then we have a class name and front page logo. Let's save this and look at that. Now we have a nice Mo wallet logo in there. I'll still keep the aqua background just so we can see the size of our wallet extension. But at the end, we'll take that background and it will look very clean. I promise you. Now, next thing is to add some nice text over here. I can just quickly run back. I, I'll quickly just run by this. Let's go ahead and add two headings. Hey there, and welcome to your Web3 wallet looks nice. Hey there, welcome to your web three wallet. And then we'll have the button. So one, we want to be able to create a wallet with a seed phrase. And then if you've logged out and you don't have access to your wallet anymore, you can use your seed phrase, which is a unique phrase of 12 words to recover your wallet and get get access back into your wallet, see your assets, start sending transactions, start sending your assets away. So for that, let's go ahead and create those two buttons. They'll have a class name of front page button. The first one will have a type of primary and the second one will have a type of default so just so we have two different types of buttons. And then like you see in the text, first one is to create a wallet and second one is to sign in with seed phrase. And we won't add the routing yet. I'll just finish up this page and then we'll add the routing. As you press one of these buttons, it will route you to the correct page and then we'll render another component than the home component. So finally, let's just add a little item at the bottom, a paragraph saying that if you want to find altcoin gems, Morales Money, of course, Morales Money is Morales' own project where, where we use Morales APIs to find altcoin gems through studying holders, liquidity, the time since the token had been minted, etc., to find and make exponential gains in the altcoin market. So let's save that. So that's just a nice little addition over here to the bottom, Morales Money IO. This will direct you to Morales Money. You can check it out. Let's open this up. Morales Money over here. It looks like this. It is awesome. Go check it out. Built by Morales APIs yourself. So probably find some inspiration. And if not anything else, find great altcoins to purchase when these next altcoin rallies come out. But now back to our extension. Let's close this. So our extension is looking awesome. We have a create wallet button, sign in with sweet seed phrase. Now let's also go ahead and go to the app.css file and remove this background color. So now it looks very, very cool. We have our my wallet. Hey there, welcome to your Web3 wallet. And you can create a wallet and sign with a seed phrase. And what we want to do is rather than just presenting this home.js component, we'll have your create account page, which has an empty div at the moment. Let's add a simple text here, create account. And then let's do the same for recover account is this currently just a very empty div, but let's add recover account in here. And now as we have that, we can try in our home.js component to route to these different routes, which would then present these two pages. But in order to do that, in our app.js file first, we have to bring in the components and add the routes to our main app. So over in here, let's go ahead and paste the create account component and recover account and make sure we pass them in, in as routes to our app. So when, when we go to different paths, we get different views of the extension. So over in here is the exact same format as for our home component. But now let's just format this nicely, like so. Now we have one path to recover and one path to your wallet where we're going to re render the create account component and recover account. And now as we have these routes, a part of our project, we can from our home page, which is initially rendered route to the recover page and your wallet page. So let's go to home.js over here. And in our button over here, let's go ahead and navigate. But to navigate, we have to bring in from react router, the use navigate hook, like so let's close down this file structure. So we see more of the code. And then of course, we have to go ahead and get the function, let's put it inside the home component const navigate is the function that uses utilizes the use navigate hook. And now on click, we can create an event over here. Let's see. This is the create wallet. So we're going to navigate to your wallet page, your wallet route is the create account component. And then for our sign in with C phrase, that will be the recover account route like so. And now we should have functionality to navigate between between different pages from our home page. So let's try this out, save this. And now as we pre press the create wallet page, it takes us to the create account route. Now let's refresh over here and sign in with C phrase. This will bring us to the recover account route. So this is going very, very quickly. We're able to route to different pages. And when he initially opened the app, it will 
prompt you to either create a wallet or sign in with your seed phrase. So let's move on to creating a wallet. All right. So closing down the home.js component, as we don't need that anymore, let's open up our file structure. And in our components folder over here, let's go over to the create account component. Let's double click it. So it's stuck to our tabs over in here. Let's close down our file structure and start working over here. So initially, before creating the functionality of actually using ethers to create a new wallet, let's go ahead and build out the front end for it. So let's bring in from Ant Design a couple of components, a button, so we can press the button to generate a new account. And then we'll have a card in which we present the seed phrase for the user so they, they can copy it and save it to their own reference. And then we'll also have a explanation circle as as a warning for the user, as it's very important for your wallets to recover your wallets, to be able to remember your seed phrase. So that's very important to prompt the user that they actually have to remember the seed phrase before they navigate forward from the page. Otherwise, their wallet may be gone forever. So let's start building this. Re let's remove the create account field over here and start off by creating that prompt at the start of the page where the user is told that you have to take care and remember your seed phrase. So like that, we have a class name of mnemonic standing for mnemonic seed phrase. We'll have our exclamation circle outline icon from Ant Design, which will also say once you generate the seed phrase, save it securely in order to recover your wallet in the future. So that should be enough for the user to know that, okay, this is very important. Let's save this and see what it looks like. So we create a wallet over here and you initially have this prompt over here. Once you generate the seed phrase, save it securely. And of course, the styling is coming from this app.css CSS file. Now, as we have this, we're going to go ahead and add a button to actually go ahead and generate a wallet. So let me just go ahead and add it over in here. Let's style this nicely. And of course, you see here on click, we have a generate wallet function. We'll go ahead and comment that out for now as we create that in a bit. And now we have that button generate seed phrase. And after that, we're going to use this card component we brought in from Ant Design that will create us a nice card in which to present our newly generated seed phrase. Of course, there's nothing in there right now. Then we're going to have to have under this seed phrase after it's generated another button where you can then use this wallet you generated with this press of a button to actually open up your wallet and start interacting and seeing your assets in that wallet. Of course, it'll be initially empty, but then you can start receiving assets, get your public key so you can send that over, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So using this button, we have another on click event where we set our wallet and mnemonic. This is a function we'll create after we've generated that wallet to store in the app our wallet details. Let's comment that out for now as well. So now we have a open your new wallet button. And then finally, as you're on this page, maybe you didn't want to go on this page, maybe you already have a wallet, you want to get back to the home page and actually go recover your account. So let's add a button over in here, we'll add a paragraph with a class name of front page bottom, this will make sure that the text is at the bottom of the page, and we'll navigate back to the home page, save that. And of course, our on click event is using the navigate function. So we have to bring that in again, as we did in our home.js component over in here, import use navigate, and then in our component, get the function from the hook, like so. So now we have that back home button, and we can go back to the home page. And now navigate between these two pages. So that was very simple because the extension is such a nice compact little thing, we can run through this front end very, very quickly. So now let's move on to actually generating the seed phrase for that we'll use a web three library called ethers, Radio. So to use ethers, of course, we have to bring it in. So we'll import e use state from react so we can store our newly created seed phrase in a state variable. And of course, ethers the library like so now let's go ahead and create that state variable inside our component over here, new seed phrase like so so our state variable is initialized to null. So we won't have anything presented in our card over here. And actually, we can now go ahead and jump into our card component over here. And conditionally, if we have a new seed phrase, we can render a pre tag with white space pre wrap. So it nicely wraps around this card and render our new new seed phrase inside this card component over here. Otherwise, it'll stay empty. So now as I save, it'll completely stay empty because our seed phrase is set to null. And now for our generate seed phrase button over here, we had this on click event called generate wallet. So let's go ahead and create this generate wallet function. Oh, let's go back and comment that out just for a minute. So our page actually works. So over here, before we return our component, let's create a function called generate wallet, like so. 
And in this function, we're going to create our mnemonic seed phrase. So we'll create a variable called binomic. Sorry for my pronunciation. It's very hard for me to say Then we're going to use ethers wallet, create a random. And what we're going to get is the mnemonic and phrase from this create random function. And what we can do now is console log this mnemonic, I should have named it something better like seed phrase. But now we can go ahead and see what happens as we press this button in our console, we should get the seed phrase for a new wallet. So let's go ahead and uncomment our generate wallet functionality over here, save that. And now let's open this up in full screen and open up a console like so. And now as we press generate seed phrase, look at that, we get a new wallet, Creek, Recall, Repeat, Tortoise, Mammal, Traffic, etc, etc. This is the 12 word phrase, which will give you access to the wallet this just created. How sweet is that? And now as you open your wallet, we can use the seed phrase to get the public key and store the seed phrase in the session of the app to actually make transactions using this newly created wallet. But this this phrase now should be presented over here in the card so the user can store it. And then basically, they should never need it again, ex except when they need to recover their account and sign back into their wallet. So let's go back into split screen mode, like so. And in our function, rather than console logging our mnemonic, let's go ahead and set our new seed phrase to the mnemonic, like so save that. And now as we generate a seed phrase, it's over in here, night, ancient cram payment, no mystery. I'm actually not going to use this. So you could actually go ahead and check out this seed phrase, use it in another wallet, and you should be able to recover this generated wallet. How sweet is that? But now to access our app and get to the wallet view page, we now need to store this seed phrase in this app. And for that, let's jump back into the app.js component and in here create a couple of new state variables. What we're going to do is create a wallet and of course the functionality to set the wallet and seed phrase. So in whenever we open this extension, we'll have these state variables set to null. And this is a very simplistic beginner friendly project. So in more production ready builds, you could look at Chrome extension storage and other storage solutions where you could store this seed phrase encrypted in Chrome storage so that you don't have to fetch the seed phrase every time you open up the extension again. But for our case, this will work pretty fine. So what we'll want to do is when we have a seed phrase in wallet, we'll render different routes, we won't render these this home page, the recover route, and the your wallet route we will re render a wallet view route, which will then have information about the wallet you've signed in with you that you've just generated a wallet or you recovered an account with your seed phrase to do that, we of course have to set the wallet and seed phrase. And now that we got them over here in our create account component, we can pass the set wallet and set seed phrase functions to the your wallet component over in here. So let's actually just go ahead and add this to another row create account over in here, we're going to pass the set seed phrase and set wallet functions. Let's go ahead and style this nicely. So now our create account sh component should have these as props. And so as we save that here in our create account component, we can get set wallet and set seed phrase like so so our whole app will know as we created this new wallet, we can go ahead and press this open new your wallet button, which will set your wallet and seed phrase to the one just created over here. So let's create that function. What we what do we call it over here? Open your new wallet, we'll have set wallet and mnemonic. So let's get this from over here. Let's create a new function function, paste that over in here. And in this function, all we'll do is go ahead and set the seed phrase to this new seed phrase we'll have over in here. So now as we press the open your new wallet button, we'll set the seed phrase used in the whole app to this seed phrase. And we can actually use another ethers function to get the public address of this seed phrase. So like so we use the ethers wallet method and the from phase function to pass in our seed phrase over in here, and then we get the address key. So now when we jump in to the wallet view, we can present the actual public facing key of this wallet. So now all we can do is 
go ahead and uncomment this out. We're going through this fast pace. Never be ashamed to stop the stop this down, slow this down, go back to the section if we go past it too fast. But now as we have this, if we go ahead and open your new wallet, all we're doing is we're setting our seed phrase and our wallet to these values, but that won't change anything. As I just created a new G seed phrase over here, if I open my new wallet, nothing's going to happen because we're just setting these values. What we have to do is over in our app.js component, we have to make the routes conditional. So if we have a wallet and a seed phrase, which are in this component over in here, what we'll do is conditionally render two different things. So of course, if we don't have them, we're going to render our typical routes from over here, copy these and paste them in over here. But now if we don't have them, we'll have another set of routes and that another set of routes. All right, that didn't paste out very nicely. So let's just go ahead and format that nicely. So if we have a wallet and seed phrase, we'll only have one route, which will be your wallet, the same as what the one when you're creating your wallet. So you're automatically going to be on that page. And now rather than rendering the create account page, you'll be rendered with the wallet wallet view component. So we have to, of course, bring that component into our app.js component. Like so we brought in wallet view. And now let's go check out the wallet view component, but of course, save the app.js file. Now it actually rendered that to the wallet view component. So what we can do is in here wallet view, we already have tokens, preset tokens and preset NFTs before we make our API call so we can see them. But that's just for our starter repo. If we go here, we have a content div again, we can type in wallet view and we should actually see this on the page. So we have wallet view over here. And now if we refresh the page, if we create a wallet, generate a new seed phrase, as we open your new wallet, this should take you to the wallet view page. Look at that. And now for this wallet view page, what we want to do is actually also pass this wallet, see, wallet and seed phrase and setting of them so that if we want to log out, we can set them back to null and that should take us back to the home routes like so. But if we want to present our public facing key, we can do that with the wallet variable and if we want to make any transactions, we can use our seed phrase to go ahead and call the ethers library and for example, send some native currency. So let's go ahead and bring in for the wallet view component, all these props, let's style this nicely. So the wallet view will get the wallet set wallet seed phrase set seed phrase. And of course, we'll also bring the selected chain state variable because when we actually interact with the blockchain and want to make some transactions, we want to know which chain we're on currently. So over here, Ethereum, Mumbai testnet, Polygon, etc, etc. So we know which which transact which network to send the transaction on. So let's go ahead and save this. And now in our wallet view component, we can start working on this. So the wallet view component now should get as we scroll down, where is it wallet view over here, it should get all these props we pass from the parent component, like so. So we have the wallet set wallet seed phrase set seed phrase and selected chain. So now just as a test, rather than displaying wallet view, let's try and display the actual wallet, like so. And now we should get the public facing key for the wallet like so. So this is actually the public facing key for the wallet you just saw the seed phrase for. Of course, this doesn't look very nice. But now we can start working on this component and make it look absolutely beautiful. Radio. So for now, let's remove this wallet from over here. So it looks nicer. And then jump over to the top of the file again. And what we'll do is from react, we'll actually have to bring use effect and use state for this component. So we can store some state variables in this component, we'll use those a bit later, then we're going to go and use a long list of different UI components from Ant design, let's import them in all over here divider tooltip list, avatar spin tabs input and button, we'll get to use all of these. And when we do, I'll reference them. And then for now, we'll also bring in logout outline button. So if we want to get back to the home, you will press a logout icon. And then of course, to log out, we'll have to navigate back to a different route. So we bring that in. So as we've done previously over here in our wallet view component, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our navigate function like so let's scroll down a little bit. So now we can navigate back home. And then in our div over here, let's create that logout button. And we'll also create a function to call logout like so so we have a logout the logout outline icon in this class name of logout button and on click we call a logout function and in this function all we have to do is set our wallet and seed phrase back to null 
So our main parent app dot component app component will be able to render back the home page and the create account page. And then we'll also navigate to the home route as we log out. So over in here, creating a function called log out. And like I said, all we have to do is set our seed phrase back to null, set our wallet back to null, and we'll navigate back to the home route. So let's go ahead and save that, see what that looks like. So now our logout button is nicely over here. What happens as we press this button, it takes us back to our home page. Now, and as I'm on this home page, I actually realized that we have to have the functionality to sign in with a seed phrase. Currently, we don't have that yet. So what we have to do is as we create a wallet over here, we generate a seed phrase, we get this wallet. So let's go ahead and actually copy this seed phrase. And in our file, we have this wallet.txt. Let's go ahead and paste this and then go ahead and open this new wallet. We can actually go ahead and view what the public facing address would have been. So in our wallet view, let's go ahead and actually get our wallet as well, like so. So let's go ahead and copy that whole thing, jump back to wallet text and paste it over in here so we can check if our recover out recover account functionality is working. So now this seed phrase should return this public facing key. And now as we log out, let's jump over into the recover account component. And this ac recover account component actually has to be able to set the wallet and the seed phrase as we did in our create account component. So our app.js, we have to start over here. So just like we did over here when in our create account component, we have to pass these two props to the recover account component as well. Let's style this nicely, seed phrase and set wallet, save that. And now jumping into the recover account component, let's bring them in over in here, set wallet and set seed phrase like so. Let's go ahead and save that. And now to recover account, let's create this recover account component. Let's also press the sign in with seed phrase. So we're actually on this component. All right. And so as we do with any of our components, let's first import all the required libraries and UI components. So we'll have all these components bulb outlined from and design icons to prompt the user to type their seed phrase for the wallet they've lost access to, then a button and a input field in which the user can actually type their seed phrase, then use navigate should also navigate us to the correct route and view the user's wallet after they've recovered their wallet seed phrase, and then state variable will store the typing of the user and then the ethers library will use the seed phrase to get the actual public facing wallet key. So that's a lot of a big of a that's a big mouthful. But you'll see as we start typing this out. So of course, let's start off with the front end first, what we'll do is we'll create that prompt like we did for our create account page as well. Like so type your seed phrase in this field below in the field below to recover your wallet, it should be include 12 words separated with spaces. Then what we'll do is have that text area. So over in here, let's go ahead and paste our text area. So type your seed phrase in here as we have a placeholder text for it. We'll add the value to be a state variable in here and create a on change event. So it changes that state variable the anytime a user types, but we'll do that after we have the front end on lock. So the next UI component will of course be a button, which will say recover wallet. I've commented out the recover wallet function as we haven't created it yet. So here we have a recover wallet button. We'll also make sure to help out the user a little bit. So we'll check what the user is typing. And if it's not a valid 12 word seed phrase, we'll disable this button later on. And then as we did with our create wallet page, if we if the user wants to go back to the home page, we'll allow that. So over in here, let's go ahead and add that like so of course, we haven't brought in the navigate function. So let's create that over in here const navigate is equal to bring it in from use navigate hook like so. So that allows us to go back home and then sign in with seed phrase. All right, beautiful, beautiful. So now let's create that state variable, which will store what the user is typing. Let's create it like so type seed and then create a function which changes this like so. So adjusting the seed is going to set the type seed to the target dot value of this text input field. So over here in our text area, we can add the value to be our type seed and on change will use this function to update our state variable. So now if we save this. Now as we start typing that is being inputted into the state variable and presented in our text area. Now we want to be able to check 
if the user has typed 12 words separated by spaces. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a disabled state for our text area. And actually, it's not going to be our text area that's going to be disabled. You always want to be able to type, but it's the button to recover your wallet. So over in here, let's go ahead and type disabled will be equal to. So what this will essentially do is check that there is 12 words typed. So if we save this, now our recover wallet is disabled. But as we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and our 12th one, our recover wallet becomes available. And now if we go over it, now it becomes unavailable again. So we're checking the amount of spaces and amount of words within our typed our text input to make sure that the user types in a correct seed phrase. But of course, the user might type in a invalid seed phrase. So we have to prompt the user about that as well. So for that, we have to create a new state variable. Non valid is going to be set to false at start. And if the non valid state changes to true, so after we try and recover our wallet, if we get a non valid state, let's go ahead and underneath our button simply conditionally render if we have the non valid state we will render a paragraph which is colored red and it'll say invalid seed phrase so if we go ahead and just for the time being set that to the not valid state being false so now we'll have this invalid seed phrase prompt for the user if if they've tried to recover wallet and sent a invalid seed phrase so let's save that and also here when we seed adjust let's go ahead and set our non valid state to false every time you adjust your seed phrase. So that means that the user is trying another seed phrase. Let's save that. And now for the coolest bit, when you try and recover a wallet. So for example, with the seed phrase that we just created a wallet with, how do we go ahead and check if that is actually a wallet? Let's try that out. So as we have over here for our recover wallet button, we have a function called recover wallet. Let's let's not uncomment that out because otherwise our app will not like it. So let's just go ahead and create that function first. So we have function called recover wallet like so. And what this will do is we'll first create a adjustable state variable let recoverable recovered wallet and we're going to write a try catch statement. And in the try section, we're going to try and set the recovered wallet to a wallet object created by ethers using the from phrase from phrase function where we put the type seed that the user has typed in. Now, if we catch an error, what we'll do is we'll use this non valid state variable to set that to true and return this function. So we won't run any other functionality below this point. But if if we manage to set the recovered wallet, what we can do is set the seed phrase for our parent app.js component to the type seed, the type seed that the user has just typed in. And we can also get the public facing key and the ad, so the address of the user with this seed phrase from the recovered wallet object in the address key. And then of course, we want to navigate to the your wallet route, which will have the wallet view as we see here in app.js, the wallet view is on path your wallet. So now we set the seed phrase and set the wallet. So now the app.js component will essentially see we're logged into our wallet, and we've set the wallet set the seed phrase, and then we can go ahead and return this function. So that is how simple it is ethers the web three library awesome, awesome to use. So now let's go ahead and uncomment our functionality over here, save this. And now let's go ahead and try recover this wallet should which should have this address. So let's go ahead and use this seed phrase, type it into here. First, actually, what we'll do is try and make sure that we use a wrong seed phrase. So let's change that to route recover wallet that gives us an invalid seed phrase. But now if we use the correct seed phrase recover wallet, that brings us to the wallet view, we're essentially logged in. And this is the same wallet address over here, CB1648, CB1648, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So we've recovered the wallet we just created. Now let's go ahead and log out. And we can go ahead and create a new wallet, generate a new seed phrase, lion guilt journey boat, autumn treat undo, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's copy that, open your new wallet, this has five CD 794D, etc, etc. 
let's sign in with seed phrase let's use the seed phrase we just copied recover wallet 5 cd 79 b 4 d so we're able to recover any wallet we recreate and you can actually recover any wallet you've created with metamask or any other wallet provider using this method so now all we have to do is create this wallet view page where you can see all your assets all your nfts and actually send some native currency as well as see the balance of your native currency all right, so now jumping into this wallet view component, we can close all the other components as we've completed them. So here in this wallet view component, we have the front end we want to consider first. So rather than displaying this wallet, let's just have a text saying wallet, wallet like so, save that looks very neat. And under this, we'll have a short, shortened version of our public facing address. And as you hover over it, you'll get a tool tip, which will have your complete address you can send to your friends, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So adding that in there, in there, like so save that. So you have your wallet 0x, 0x 5c. And then as you hover, you get the whole wallet. So now let's try a log out. Let's go ahead and sign in with our seed phrase. Let's actually get our wallet from over here. Copy this, we'll use this throughout this tutorial paste that in there, recover our wallet. So now 0x43, 0x43, ending in E334F is the actual wallet. We've recovered that. And let's start playing with this. So now wallet view over here. Finally, we'll add a divider. So under here, we'll have the different tabs of our actual wallet view. And we'll have a place where you can see your tokens, your NFTs. And then finally, what we'll have is a place to be able to transfer the native currency you've currently selected over in here. So let's add that in there like so. So we have the tabs brought in from Ant Design. So Ant Design provides tabs, which is very useful for us. And use the class name Wallet View, and the items will be defined in a items array. So we have to create this items array, which will have separate UI components depending on the tab you selected. So over in here, below our use navigate hook, destructuring for the navigate function, let's create a items array and in here let me just paste in a very simple form of this items array like so so we have our initial key which is three as we want to default to the transfer tab but in this initial key we'll have our tokens we're just rendering the string tokens over here then the next one will have the nfts and the final one will have transfer so save this see what that looks like look at that transfer nfts tokens like so very very beautiful so now we can work on these individual components to view the wallet of the user this user over here wallet 0x43c and their assets and this is exactly why in this component i have some preset tokens arrays and nfts arrays where we have two nft images and then we have a set of tokens and this is the format we'll set up our back end to present our tokens and NFTs so that we can present them over here, test them out as we build out the UI here now. So let's go ahead and close these down for now. So we have a bit more room and real estate. And here in our tokens, let's start off with this. What we can do is make it conditionally rendered. So over here, we have tokens. As long as we have the tokens, we'll render something. And if we don't have the tokens, we'll render something else. And simply we can do the state where we don't have tokens. So this will only be a scenario if we make a request to our backend and it doesn't return us any tokens. So this wallet wouldn't have any tokens, for example. So we would want to present something to the user. So let me just simply add that over in here. And in here, let's add just a empty component. Seems like we have a extra colon over there. But so what you, we have here is you seem to not have any tokens yet. And again, we'll prompt the users to go to Morales money where they could actually find some possible alt, to alt tokens they could want, they might want to get. So let's style this nicely. Again, we can go ahead and hide this conditionally rendered bit. And if we look at this, jump over to the tokens page. Currently, it's just this empty page. But and if we make sure that for a while here, we just make the tokens equal to null, like so. Now we have this, you seem to ha not have any tokens yet, and that is prompted the user. But in our case, we will have the tokens, so we will render something else. And now for that render state over in here, over in the tokens tab, what we'll have is a list. And this list, we don't have to close it like so. We can just have everything inside this list like so. And let's just make sure it's bordered, first of all. Let's see what happens. Save this. We don't have any data. 
no data that's beautiful we'll make sure the item layout is horizontal like so and let's just paste in the other stuff our data source will be tokens and as the data source is an array we can use the render item prop to render each element in the tokens array so we get the item of the tokens which will be an object which will have a symbol a name balance and decimals the balance is of course the balance with decimals so we if we divide by the decimals we get the actual balance nominated in single figures so over here let's go ahead and check what we added we added as the avatar the item's logo if we don't have a logo we'll use the logo that we bring into this component and it will be in the starter repository so all you have to do is add the logo in here like so the no image now as we scroll down we check out the rest of it as a title we have the symbol text then as the description we'll have the name of the object and then next to the list items meta we will have a div which will have the number of tokens so we get the number the item balance and then as, as I said we divide by decimals to get the actual token numbers so let's go ahead and save this see what that looks like look at that very very beautiful of course in this scenario because we don't have the logos we just have these question marks but the actual Morales API gives you the logos for these tokens so they'll be presented very nicely when we call the back end now for the NFTs we'll do the exact same thing so let's go ahead and for now hide this out we can actually hide the whole key three and jump into key two over here let's go ahead and conditionally render this whether or not we have the nfts over in here if we have an nfts array of course now we have this hard coded in the starter repo, repo but when we make a call to the back end we'll actually fetch them let's add a question mark over here and then a semicolon to render the case where we have no nfts for this case let's again go ahead and add to get rid of these red lines let's add that empty component over in here so we'll add that you do not have seem to have any nfts yet let's go ahead and close that and now for the scenario where we actually do have some nfts we're going to map through the nfts and as you see here in the nfts they're returned just in an array of the nfts images so that's all we're at requesting from the back end we could get the names of the nfts the token ids that's something you could implement in your own versions in our version we just have the images of these nfts so all that we're going to do in this nfts tab we're going to map through these nfts and is as long as there is a string in the array we're going to return an image with a class name of nft image and the source will be whatever the element is in the nfts array so for example this one this one etc cetera, etc cetera. let's look, see what this looks like for some reason it's not liked it's probably because we closed this component twice let's remove that save that and look at that now we have these nfts there's one adidas alt nft collection and one nakamigos nft so very cool now we have the tokens that the user has and the nfts that the user has and then finally in the final tab we'll want to allow the user to transfer their assets but now as we have these two values what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and integrate with the morales api through a back end to make sure that we can get this wallet's actual nfts and tokens so let's try it out and of course it'll work depending on the chain you are currently the chain doesn't make a difference but as we send a call to the morales backend we'll actually send the chain we want to get the nfts and assets for and that will change the wallet view how sweet does that sound so let's go ahead and implement that next all right so what we can do is let's go ahead and open this up in full screen mode for a moment we can go ahead and jump in to our file structure close down our front end folder and here we'll find the back end folder and we're going to jump into the index.js file which is a very simple express app which brings in morales so that we can make calls to the morales api all we have to do is start off as we start off the express app we initialize it by passing in the morales start function with the with your morales api key that you store in a variable called morales underscore key in the dot env folder if you don't already have a morales api key what you can do is get one from the link in the description it'll take you to morales.io a page that looks something like this and you can go ahead and start for free or log in of course we also have very generous plans for pro business and enterprise users if you require large api limits for unicorn level web3 companies but as you log in you'll face the morales admin dashboard 
you can go to the Web3 APIs here in the sidebar and your API key is over here where you can copy it. This will just give you access to your Morales functionality. So now jumping into Visual Studio Code, you have this set up. Now we can check out, check out what we're actually going to write into this one get endpoint over here called get tokens. Currently, it's just responding with a status of 200. But what we're going to want to do is first make some calls to the Morales API. And as we call this API, we send some query parameters. So the user's address that we've set the wallet to. So of course, here we have the user's wallet address and the chain they've selected. So we have going to have to parse those over here in this endpoint so that we can call the Morales API with those parameters. All right, so let's go ahead and add our request query parameters parsed over here, user address and chain. So when we make from our Chrome extension request to this endpoint, we have to make sure that we send the user address and chain parameters. Then we can do our first Morales API call and Morales API calls are super simple to make. You can check out the documentation on morales.io, but we'll just go ahead and run through this very quickly. So using the SDK, we have the EVM API tokens method. And in that we have a function called get wallet token balances. It's as simple as that. By default, it will use the Ethereum chain, but you can pass the chain EVM chain you want to get tokens for by passing the chain parameter and then the address you want to check the balances for. So we're going to pass our user address and this will give us our tokens. And then we, what we can do is create a object const JSON response. Here, we're going to create a key called tokens and whatever we get back from the Morales API, will get the raw format of the JSON response and pass that as the tokens key value. And then what our endpoint will return us will be this JSON response. So let's go ahead and try this out. Opening up our terminal, let's add a new terminal instance, CD into the backend folder. Then of course, npm i to install all the dependencies we've got, Morales, Express, Cores, and .env. And now as we run node index.js, we are listening to API calls at port 3001. So if we open up Google Chrome and make a request to if we jump over, for example, here in the Morales admin dashboard here in the navigation bar, let's go to localhost 3001 get tokens. And then of course, we have to pass a user address and the chain. And I've tried this before. So here we have the user address and chain we're using Ethereum, this returns us all the tokens on the Ethereum mainnet for this wallet address. And this wallet address is my test MetaMask account. So here as I open up MetaMask, let's see here we have USDC, Chainlink, Matic and Uniswap. Let's see what this gives us. We have Matic tokens, Uniswap tokens, USD coins and Chainlink. And we get the balance, the decimals, the logo, the symbol, the name, all this data simply in the response. And this, as you might remember, responds very vividly to what we have over here in the tokens array hard coded in our wallet view. So now as long as we make this call to this backend endpoint, we'll receive these tokens for our Chrome extension and we can present these, which will have as the logo as well. And we won't have to render these question marks. So that's the first bit. Now let's go for the NFTs. So jumping back into Visual Studio Code in our index.js file where we just get made a request for tokens, we can do the exact same thing for NFT balances like so. So look at how simple that is and how easy it is. Morales EVM API NFT method and using the get wallet NFTs endpoint, we can pass the chain address as we did with tokens and Morales automatically fetches high definition, low definition, medium definition media items for you if you set the media items a parameter to true. So we'll do that and we'll send the high definition images to our front end as our front end over here, the Chrome extension only has an array of the images. So let's try this out. Let's see what this NFTs objects looks like. Let's console log it in our backend server over here. Console log NFTs dot raw dot result. Let's see what it looks like. Save this. Let's go ahead and restart our backend control C and node index.js. Let's jump into our front end, refresh this. And now as we go back to our backend over here, we get an empty array. We don't have any NFTs. And that's because on the Ethereum network, this account doesn't have any NFTs. But 
On the Polygon test net, which has a different hex key, I do have some test NFTs. So let's add that 0x13881 as the chain we're requesting NFTs from. So now you can see that we get that tokens here in our response object. We have some wrapped Ether, Mintable USD, Chainlink tokens, and this my token I generated myself here on the Polygon Mumbai testnet for this account. But now as we open up our backend, look at this. We have all these NFTs. We scroll up. We have all these test NFTs I have on this account. And as you'll notice, as we go through them, Morales also checks if they're spam NFTs. So we have this possible spam key, which has false in it. So this is most likely not a spam NFT, but if there are any spam NFTs, they'll have a true. Let's see if we have any. Well, in our case, seems like we don't have a lot of spam NFTs because I don't really use this wallet for anything. So that's what we don't have them, but we can always check for possible spam NFTs and filter those out. And then we have this media collection object. And in that media collection, it's hard to see right now, but you'll have a key with high, mid, and low, which will have the URL of this image already parsed for you. So what we can do is we can go ahead and write a little conditional over here. And rather than console logging the NFTs, dot raw dot result let's console log nft dot results and map if there is a media collection and a high definition url and it's not pot it's not a spam nft and the category is in video so we'll only present our image nfts what we're going to return is the high definition url so let's see what this looks like save that open up our terminal rerun this Control c node index.js open up Google Chrome, rerun this request. And now our backend console logged should have for all the NFTs in my wallet. If there is a high definition image, it will parse it automatically for us. And we can actually go ahead and check this image, copy this, open up Google Chrome and paste it over in here. And look at this. This is a moon NFT test NFT I've used in a previous tutorial, which hasn't been revealed yet. How sweet is that? So now we have all these images returned by our backend so we can return this same array to our Chrome extension and present them in our app. So what we'll do is here in our NFTs, rather than here console logging, let's go ahead and create a variable const my NFTs equals this mapping of the response from the Morales NFT API, and then we'll return the my NFTs as a response. Let's add a comma here. So as we save this, now let's see what the response looks like. Restart our server, go into Google Chrome and refresh this. So now as well as getting the tokens, we also get a list of all the NFTs. And for the NFTs that we don't have a image, there's a null, so we don't have to present those in our Chrome extension. How sweet is that? So basically here in our Chrome extension, now we have the tokens and these NFTs. So our backend is fully functional. But one last thing, as we have this transfer tab over here, in this tab, what we want to do is send some native currency, whether it's Ethereum on the Ethereum network, on the Mumbai testnet, it'll be Matic tokens. So we want to know our native balance. And Morales, of course, has an API for that as well. So let's integrate that as well, the final endpoint over here. So we have our NFTs. And now let's make that last call to the Morales API balance endpoint, get native balance, exactly the same format, chain, user address, and that gives us our balance. And then we can return our balance over here in the JSON response. So the balance will be our balance response, the raw format, and it'll have the balance key. So that should do us very nicely. We can do it one last time, restart our server, go back to Google Chrome, where we make our request, refresh this, and look at that. We have our tokens, our NFTs, and our balance, which is, I think that is three Matic, that's 18 trailing digits after the three. three. So let's check that out. Make sure that on the Polygon testnet over here, we have three Matic. That works very, very sweet. So now, now we can go ahead and leave this back end running, jump back into our front end so we can close this index.js file. That was all it was for the back end. That's how simple it is to use Morales. So please go check that out, as this will also be in the final repositories if we went through this too fast. So let's close that. And now back in this Chrome extension wallet view component, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to call this back end 
endpoint. So for that, let's bring in Axios. So in here, we bring in Axios. This will allow us to make a call to our backend. Let's also close down our file structure over here so we can see what's going on. And now as we go down where we have created some functions, let's close down these items for now. So we created this logout function. Let's also create a asynchronous function, async function over here to get account tokens. So what we're, we're going to use this function for is to get the response from our backend we just have running on localhost 3001. Of course, you could host it on Heroku or any other service or locally, but we have it on port 3001. So all we have to do now is create a Axios get request where we await localhost 3001, the get tokens endpoint, and as query parameters, we send the user address and the chain. So as the chain, we use the selected chain, the user has selected on the header of the app. So let's go ahead and go to split screen mode once more, like so. So the user wallet is of course here. If you're in the wallet view portion, you have the user's wallet, that's this wallet over here. And then the selected chain, that is the value over here. And that is in the hex format, because in the app.js component, as we have our select component, the label is presented on the app, but the value is stored as the hex value. So that will be sent to our back end. So now as we wait for the response from Axios, we're going to go ahead and create a response variable, which will be the data that our backend endpoint sends back to us. And then we have to create a few state variables where we can store the tokens, NFTs and native balance. So over in here, we'll go ahead and add our tokens, NFTs and our balance. So as we place them in the component, now you'll see our NFTs and tokens that we had in the starter repo will not be available anymore. So we can remove them like so. And then we'll have also the balance new balance that we'll have in the transfer tab. So now we can use the set token and set NFTs and set balance to set the user's balances. But of course, we want to make sure that it's not an empty array for any of the tokens or NFTs. So if our response tokens length is greater than zero, then we'll set our tokens to be our response tokens, we can actually remove the console log over here, we'll do the same thing for NFTs, like so, and from the balance, it'll always return us a zero or the actual balance. So we can always set the balance. And one nice thing we can do is every time we call this function, we can set a fetching state. So we can add a spinner over here in the Chrome extension that indicates to the user that we are actually calling the Morales APIs and fetching your data. So for that, we have to create a state variable for fetching like so. And now when we come back to our get account tokens function, what we can do every time we start this function, we can set the fetching state to true like so. And as the function has finished its, all this functionality, we can set the fetching state to false like so that is excellent, excellent. And now we have to just make sure when we call this get account tokens. So what we can do is we can create a very simple use effect. So over in here, we create a use effect. And we make sure that we have a wallet and a selected chain so that our get account tokens function will have a wallet and selected chain to use. We set all the previous values to null values because the get account tokens function will set them to the new NFTs, tokens, and balances. And then this is always rendered on mount of this component. Another thing we can do is we can do the same thing when the selected chain changes. So if I change from Polygon to Ethereum, I want to get my assets for that correct network. So that is the exact same thing, just as the dependency array, we don't have an empty dependency array, but we have the selected chain as the triggers over here. So now everything in essence should be working. One thing we also want to make sure is that we set everything to null if we log out from the app. So in this case, when someone else logs in, they will have their own NFTs. So let's go ahead and save this and try this out. So now as we save, now go and check out our tokens will have you seem to have no you seem to not have any tokens yet. And in NFTs, you seem to not have any NFTs yet. Because this wallet we just created, we won't have any NFTs and we can return back to this wallet. But let's actually test out our own MetaMask wallet. So let's go ahead and open this full screen. For now, we have this MetaMask wallet over here, where we have assets on the polygon test net, and we have assets on the Ethereum mainnet, like so. So let's try and use this as a reference and go ahead and log out, sign in with seed phrase. Now I'll blur this out because I'll use the seed phrase for my test account here on MetaMask and let's recover this wallet. And now 
if we go check out our NFTs, we don't have any NFTs on the Ethereum network as we tested, but the tokens, check this out. We have Matic tokens, Uniswap tokens, USDC tokens, and Chainlink tokens, and they match the exact amounts that we have over here on MetaMask. So 1.3 USDC, 0.09 Chainlink, 10 Matic tokens, and 0.63 Uni tokens. How sweet is that? And as we change the Polygon testnet, let's see, here we have 12 link and 18 USDC. Let's go ahead and change this to Mumbai testnet. And as it fetched the details, we actually get all the tokens, Chainlink tokens, USDC tokens, and wrapped Ethereum tokens, because we haven't even imported them. If we import tokens over here, let's go ahead and add the contract address for WETH, like so, add custom token. We have 0 0.038, 0 0.04 tokens, import tokens. So where MetaMask, you have to import the tokens, Morales APIs, you get everything automatically, like so. And for the NFTs, we also have all the NFTs. So this is the one we tested out, but we have some of the NFTs we've used in previous tutorials. How sweet is that? And you can see them all in your wallet. Very, very cool and very sweet when you change to Ethereum. Now you get the Ethereum NF tokens because you've selected that to, to be the chain you want your wallet to work on. Finally, we have to work on the transfer functionality where you can transfer your tokens. But one thing I noticed that we want to have that fetching effect. So we want to be want there to be a spinner rather than it going to a blank state while we select chains, while we, while we change chains. So what we'll do is go to split screen mode. Then here in our wallet view component, as we scroll all the way down, we have our tabs here. Let's make a conditional. So it'll be very simple. If we have the fetching state, we use the Antestine spinner to render a spinner. And otherwise we do our tabs normally like so. So now as we save this, you see a little spinner and then you get your tokens. And as we go for Mumbai testnet, you get your Mumbai testnet tokens. And of course, we're always rent brought to the transfer tab automatically. We get our NFTs. How very sweet is this? This is so cool. The coolest part of it is that we can actually make some transfers. So let's go ahead and log out. Let's log in to our account that we created here. We have this seed phrase that sign in with a seed phrase. Let's use this seed phrase recover wallet and we have this account. Now let's send some Matic token, some tokens on the Matic network to this account and see if they rendered over here in this wallet. So let's open this wallet, open up MetaMask over here. We have our account one. Let's send some, for example, Chainlink tokens, send, send to a public address. We have an address over here. Let's copy this, jump back over into MetaMask, send our link tokens, send, send to a public address over here. And let's send, for example, to link next. Confirm this message. Now this link is sending. We can go ahead and swap between Ethereum and then swap back to Mumbai testnet. And now as we go to our tokens, look at this, we have the two chain link tokens. And we only should have 10 chain link tokens over here 10 chain link tokens because they were sent to the Mumbai testnet to this new wallet we created. That is how it works. How sweet is that? So now final thing to do is transfer any native tokens we have in this wallet. So for that, let me just log out and jump back into my test MetaMask account log out over here. All right, like so. So this is the wallet that we have on MetaMask as well. We have these assets, USDC, Chainlink, Matic, Uniswap. So we can use this wallet to make an actual transfer of our native balance. And as you see over here on MetaMask, we have some native balance of Ethereum. And as we change to the Polygon testnet, we have some native balance of Matic as well. And because our backend is returning our native balance as well, we can start by populating that at the top over here. So we know how much of the native balance we can transfer. Let's go ahead and swap this to Mumbai testnet. So we should have our Mumbai testnet tokens. Perfect, perfect. We have some NFTs as well. But now let's populate our Polygon testnet Matic tokens and then give an option to set an amount and a two address we want to send a send a transaction with. So let's try and do that. Go to split screen mode, like so. And we're in the wallet view component. Let's open it up full screen so we see what we're doing. And here where we have our items, let's go ahead and open this up. And we have our tokens and NFTs completed. But now we have this transfers component, which currently just says transfers. But let's populate this with the native balance. So let's start populating this starting off. We're going to use our native balance, say that. So now we have our native balance over here in the wallet. And then we have the balance 
that we set as we make a request to our backend so we can use the balance variable. But we also need to know the token ticker for the native balance. And I've set up a change.js file over here, which exports details of each of the chains. And I've set it up for Ethereum and Mumbai testnet. We're going to have to add an RPC URL when we actually want to make the transaction, but that's going to come in a bit. But now as we use this chains config object, we know that if we are on the Mumbai testnet, we get our ticker from there. So let's bring this chains config object to our wallet view component over here at the top, like so. And now as we know the selected chain, we can just get from the chains config object, the selected chain and the ticker from there. So going back to our component for the transfers over here, let's first render the balance and then the ticker. We can, for example, put it in a heading one tag like so. So now we should get the balance and from the chains config object, we can get the selected chain, which we have at the top corner and then the ticker. So we save this and now we should get some Matic over here. Awesome, awesome. But now it has all the decimals. So we actually have to go ahead and modify our backend script. So we have our backend over here. Let's open up index.js. And as we have our balance returned over here in the JSON response, let's make sure that we divide it by 10 to the power of 18. So this will make sure that when we get our responses back, let's open up our backend over here, stop it for a moment, restart it. So now as we change networks, we should get the native balance to the correct digits. And as we go to Mumbai, we should get three Matic. But of course, we can go ahead and make it look a slightly nicer over here. We add in our wallet view two fixed two decimal points, for example, so it looks a bit neater. Look at that 3.07 Matic. So now you know how much Matic you have in this wallet that you can transfer. And when you change networks, you see how much of the native balance on Ethereum we have. So we have 0.01 Ethereum in this wallet. But now let's go ahead and add the input fields to select the two address and amount we want to send. And then we'll use the ethers library to actually confirm this transfer that we want to do. So let's add those input fields and a button over in here. We can close down the terminal go ahead and paste it in here. Let's style this nicely, like so. So now you see that we have two send rows, which each have a indication of what the input field is for, and then a input field. We've commented out the value because we haven't set these state variables, we'll have a send to address and amount to send state variable. So we'll see what this looks like now. Like so we have a two address and an amount we want to send. So now we just have to create those state variables create them over here, like so amount to send set amount to send we initialize them to null. But as we go ahead and uncomment out these two segments, now the value is set to the state variable. And anytime any the user changes these input fields, we're going to go ahead and get the input field to change very, very cool. And of course, we'll have to have a button that triggers the sending of this transaction like so. So we have a simple button brought in from ad design. Again, we have some styling and on click it will go ahead and send our transaction using the send transaction function and the state variables we've set in these two input fields, but we haven't created this function yet. So let's go ahead and comment that out for the time being save that make sure everything looks pretty send tokens very, very cool. So now let's create this send transaction function. And for that we need the ethers library, let's bring it in at the top of our file, like so. And then as we go below where we have our functions, let's create this send transaction function. And it takes as parameters, a two address and a amount. So we have to make sure that we have those set over in here. All right, that looks beautiful. And let's initialize it by checking out which chain we have currently selected and get the chains config object. So this so either this Mumbai testnet object over here or this Ethereum object over here, depending on which chain we want to make this transaction for, because then we'll get the RPC URLs, which is important for us to make a connection to the blockchain. So if you don't have an RPC URL, you have to make sure that you go get one from Infura or Alchemy and place it over in here. I won't do that right now, but make sure to if you want to have this actually functional, you have to have your RPC URLs over here. I'll add it as I close this window. So here in the wallet view, let's go ahead and get our chain like so. So now we have from our chains config object, our selected chain, and then we can get the RPC URL. And what this will allow us to do is create a pro provider using a new ethers JSON RPC provider using our RPC URL we have stored 
in our config object. Now to make a transaction with the ethers library, we also need to get our private key. And because we have the seed phrase stored in the session in the seed phrase variable, we can use that using the ethers libra library to parse our private key. So that is a simple function like so. So we use ethers wallet from phrase and we pass our seed phrase in there and from the key key value bears the private key will give you your private key. Now let's create a new instance of our wallet with the ethers library, like so. So we use our private key and the provider we've set in the previous steps over here. And now we have our wallet, then we want to create a transaction object and identify what sort of transaction we want to send. For our case, because we're just sending native currency, we have to provide a two address and the amount. And as we pass them over here, we can just pass the two address as that will be the public facing key for the user. And then the value we can use the ethers library to parse the ether amount. So you get the correct decimal. So as in the amount you'd put one one Ethereum, for example, it would parse it to be the correct amount of decimals. Then let's go ahead and create a try catch statement where in the try segment, but first let's create that catch error, like so, for example, in this catch section, we can go ahead and set our two amount two and amount variables to null. So we know something went wrong, like so. And now in the try, we're going to go ahead and try and make this transaction. So using this new instance of our wallet, we're going to try and send this transaction object. So we get our transaction, we're waiting our wallet to send a transaction. And we have this transaction passed in over there. And then if this goes through, we can go ahead and use a wait for a receipt like so. And basically, now this would be functional, but for the user to kind of be able to track how their transaction is going, we'll create a few state variables to store the transaction hash and a processing state. So the user know when their transaction has gone through or failed. So in our state variables, let's create two state variables, one for processing and one for the transaction hash like so. So we have a processing state that is initially set to false and a hash that's initially set to null. Now, if we go ahead and get a transaction over here, we can set our hash to be equal to the transaction dot hash, like so, and then we can use that to render it in our view in a bit here. And if we get this received object, that means that the transaction has completed either it failed or it went through. So then we can go ahead and empty out these input fields and set our hash to null again. So we set our hash to null, we set the processing state back to false and set the amount to send and send send to address to null. But as you see, we set the processing state to false over here. So before we start this try catch loop, we got to we're going to have to go ahead and set the processing to true. So now the user can see nicely that their transaction is currently processing. And one final thing to do, if we get through all these awaits in this try loop, we can go ahead and get the user's new balance. So we can use the function we have over here at the bottom, get account tokens and run that again, so that we get the current the actual balance after sending this transaction. So basically, what we can do is go ahead and check out the receipt status. If the status is zero, the transaction failed, and we'll just console log failed. But in the case where the status of the receipt is one, that means the transaction was successful. And then we can go ahead and fetch the users tokens again, which will get their new native balance after sending these tokens. And that should be it. If I haven't missed anything, we should be good to go. One thing in this cache statement, we could also go ahead and set our hash and processing states to null like so just to make sure that everything works beautifully. Let's go ahead and save this. And also, when we return our UI, let's make sure in our transfer tab. So we go over to where we have our transfer tab over here, the lowest button, let's check out if we have a processing state and a hash value, we can present them to the user. And we can indicate some sort of spinning animation to make sure that the transaction is processing. So let me just add that over in here. So if we have a processing state, we'll have the and design spinner. And if we have a hash, we'll have a paragraph with which has hover for transaction hash. And then in the tooltip, we'll have the transaction hash. So let's go ahead and save that. And now everything should we will be working, make sure that you have that RPC URL for the network you want to test out. And let's go ahead and test this out. All right, and, be, and to be able to track this very nicely, let's open this up full screen for a moment. Let's get our wallet over here. Let's open up account two, where we have this wallet address, we have 31 Matic right now. So let's try and send some of this Matic in. So we'll get that address. 
from over there, we'll send the amount to say 1.07. So we should get a nice round number of two Matic left in this wallet. Let's go ahead and send these tokens and nothing happens. And that is because we dev we actually didn't allow the on click event. So let's do that over here in our code. Let's go ahead and uncomment this on click event, which will fire up our send transaction function we just created. So that's beautiful right now. Open this up full screen and now go ahead and we can actually make sure that that's that correct wallet address 0x5d8, which sounds good. Sending 1.07 Matic, let's send these tokens. We get the spinner and now we got the hover for transaction hash. That's our transaction hash. If you wanted to set, check it on a block explorer, you could actually even go ahead and add a link to it. And now the transaction went through. We only have two Matic left. We did a new query to our backend to check our wallet's balance, which is excellent. And now we can go check it out over here. We just got the extra 1.07 Matic into this wallet. And you can also see it over here. We have two Matic left in this wallet, which is my MetaMask wallet, which I've connected with the wallet we've just made. So that is the complete build. We're able to get our NFTs for a wallet, get our tokens for a wallet and make transactions with the native balance of our wallet. The beautiful thing is also you can ch change networks. This is cross chain compatibility with the Morales APIs. How sweet is that? So on the Ethereum network, we don't actually have any NFTs. We have some tokens. We have Matic tokens, Uniswap tokens, USD tokens, Chainlink tokens. And beautifully, we can also log out and sign in with a seed phrase. So if we go ahead and close this down slightly, we have that wallet we created earlier on in the video. This wallet, we get this seed phrase, copy that over, paste that over in here, we can recover a wallet. And now we see that this wallet doesn't have any Ethereum balance. But as we change to the Mumbai testnet, we ha should have some test chain link tokens Two test chain link tokens. Now, final thing to do is go ahead and add it as a extension to Chrome. And that is super simple to do. Let me show you how. So here in our code section, we'll have this manifest.json file. So if you check out the public directory, we have this manifest.json file. This will be in the starter repository. So all we have to do is get the name of the wallet. Let's go for my wallet blueprint because this is a Morales blueprint. Let's change that to a small L like so. The description, your first crypto wallet extension. Very, very cool and very important to set the manifest version to three. The action will be that the default pop up. So the pop up as you open up the extension will be index.html where as we build this react project, the react project will be. And this default title is just the tooltip, which will show in the extension. Now let's go ahead and save this. Open up our terminal, open up a new window jump into the front end folder, CD my wallet, and go ahead and run npm run build. So B U I L D. Let's close down all the folders over here. And you should see a new build folder pop up in this front end section of the build. And you see we're creating an optimized production build and the build folder just created over there. And also to note, you can check out the Chrome extension documentation, you can add logos to your extension, all sorts of cool stuff. And as I said in the earlier, if you want to encrypt your seed phrases, etc, into Chrome storage, you can use permissions like storage to use Chrome extension storage rather than state variables we used in this tutorial. But now we have this build folder. So what this means is we can open up Google Chrome over here. And you should have your extensions over here, you can go ahead and manage your extensions. And I've already had the test version over here. But what you do is you load unpacked, go to this directory, which is wallet extension starter, and front end my wallet and build and select that. So I'll go ahead and do that load unpacked. So here you see we have the my wallet front end directory, and we have this build folder, and we can select this. And that just created it over here, my wallet blueprint. And every time in your terminal, as you run npm run build, it will update and you can refresh it over here. And now as we go ahead and check out our extensions over here, my wallet blueprint is over here. Let's unpin the one we had. Let's pin this and it's pinned over here in your terminal in your Chrome extensions. If we open this wallet and look at that, our wallet we just created over here as a react app now is available over here as a Chrome extension, we can change the chains, all is working well, we can sign in with our seed phrase, let's try and do this opening up our Visual Studio code over in here, let's get that wallet we created at the start, 
copy this over, paste it over in here, recover our wallet, and it works beautifully. We have this wallet that ha doesn't have any native tokens, but as we check out, it has the two linked tokens. No NFTs, but you could go ahead and find some altcoin gems at Morales Money. So that is the complete build of how you can create a cool Chrome extension using React, Morales, and the Ethers Web3 library. I hope you really enjoyed this build and you stay stuck in and comment down below what you would like to see next in our blueprints. I'll catch you in the next one.